Hello, Joseph here. Uh, today I'm doing a quick tip tutorial on reference image setup in uh, 3 Studio Max 2014 and how I work and how I used to work and what I find good and bad about 3D Studio Max 2014. Yeah, let's start. Uh, I used to work like this in 3D Studio Max 2012-2013. I just went to... I select my viewport of choice go to viewport, viewport background, configure viewport background, use file and then I select my reference image, in this case a knife, and then match bitmap to the viewport and uh, you see, you here I have the reference image and it looks nice but the problem in 3D Studio Max 2014 is that now you can't pan and uh, zoom together with your viewport image. They've added a new feature in Perspective View called 2D Pan Zoom Mode, which I think replaces the old uh, way of working. But the new way of working is, in my opinion, broken and works pretty bad. So, But I'm going to show you what I think is the new way and how it's supposed to work. Um, if I go to this home page, uh, they explained the new feature. This is great for when you're moving around or you need to zoom in and do some image-based modeling or just some tweaking to your models that are within your scene. It's per yeah, uh, I don't agree, but that's, that's what they're supposed to do. So if I go into 2D pan zoom, and uh, load my viewport uh, image. Oh, sorry. Same procedure as last time. Match bitmap, okay. Now you see it works. I can pan and zoom, and my viewport image is always in place. But it only works at perspective camera, so that's I don't like that so much. But you could use the viewport cube to, you know, get there. You go to left viewport, and now you are completely from the side. And I guess you could start modeling now after your reference. Um, like this. Uh, I've noticed a lot of bugs with the uh, pan and uh, zoom mode, maybe if I just press 100% here hmm. I can't even draw it out, maybe if I draw it here first and then rotate it 90 degrees like that, so convert it to editable poly and uh, now I move the points to where I want them but as I said before, I noticed a lot of bugs with uh, this 2D pan and zoom. So I don't really like it that much yet. But for example, here I have my model uh, close to where my reference image is. But if I maximize, it gets out of uh, sync. And if I minimize, it gets out of sync. But it's not a big problem because you only have to pan for it to jump back into place, but I find this a bit annoying that it always loses focus if you maximize and minimize because I do that a lot. And uh, if I go to, if I for example had some something else like a car or, or another object and I have reference image from the front, you have to set that up too to perspective camera and then uh, 2D pan zoom and uh, yeah. It works, I suppose, but it doesn't work that good and I don't like it at all. So I'm going to show you the way I work right start fresh. Uh, this is the many use this method of working with reference image instead of viewport background image, and that's just to draw a simple plane in your preferred viewport, and that's supposed to be left for this model. And uh, after you created plane, you want to center it to the world. 
and uh, then you want to give it the mat material of your reference image. In this case, my knife. And you want to pay attention to the width and height ratio. Let's open this and apply it to my plane. So here I have my image and uh, yeah, I have to now see to the see to that the width and length ratio is almost the same as the pixel aspect ratio. But yeah, something like that looks good. And uh, now it works and now you could work with your another model on top of that. And then So this is an old method of working with reference image and it works quite good but it takes more time to set it up than the old method but anyhow this is the way I prefer working right now so as you can see works pretty good um, a pro little problem with this is if you go into wireframe mode you, you lose your reference image too and that is a pain in the ass but I guess you have to live with it um, another thing is you can accidentally select your model but that's easily uh, prevented by freezing your object but it turns grey so then you have to go into display and activate uh, show frozen in grey and uh, freeze selection so, so it doesn't freeze so this works good and it's a good way to work but uh, there are ways to make uh, this process even simpler and that is to use 3D Studio Max scripts I use a lot of scripts when working with 3D Studio Max and uh, for reference image here you have some examples blueprint manager drag and drop reference image and uh, Soulburn scripts also have a image uh, reference image setup thingy I use Soulburn scripts, I like it a lot and I will show you how you set it up. So you have the homepage I address here. I will post it in a link on my YouTube video. So you just have to download Solbun scripts to your desired flow folder. Yes, or something. And what you need to do next is go into that folder and extract it into your 3D Studio Max. Uh, destination like so and then you have to replace the file and merge the folders together everything how to install it is described in this page um, you have a drag and drop uh, reference and how you install that is also described on this page and there is even a video displaying and uh, explaining how it works and the same with blueprint manager is explained so I don't need to go into detail about them I will show you though how the soul script uh, viewport reference works so if I restart 3 Studio Max again when you have installed your soul burn scripts all you have to do is go into customize, customize user interface and then you go into toolbars and you go to category Solburn script uh, here and then you go into something called Solburn script let's see Solburn script lister UI and you just drag and drop it maybe to any other new menu or you can assign it as a hotkey or how you like it and uh, now if you activate you get the Solburn script lister and it has a lot of scripts but the one we are looking for is called image plane maker so what you want to do now is uh, apply and you have to just choose your reference images and I have uh, mine from the side so I press here load my reference image 
I will also load another image in the top viewport because I'm going to show you uh, something you need to do. So when it's uh, when it's loaded into the selected uh, viewport, so you just press apply. Have to activate uh, wireframe uh, shaded mode, and that's often F3 and F4. Then I have it in top, I think. Yeah, exactly. So now it's set up. Uh, a thing you can see here, I choose this image because it's very, very large. And you see suddenly it gets very blurred. It gets better if you zoom in. The same here, if I compare my knife image in my viewport to my knife image in my folder, You can see that 3D Studio Max blurs my image a lot more. This is a lot more sharper than in the viewport. And uh, it has something to do with how the asset tracker manages your file. So if you go to asset tracking and then you select your two images and go into uh, enable proxy system. Oh, sorry, uh, and then global settings. You see that they are downscaled. So uh, what I want to do is take them to full, and then render with full resolution and ge generate proxies. And now we see the knife got a lot sharper. The image. So I would recommend doing that, especially if you have a big picture. But yeah, if you have a slow computer. Maybe you don't want to do that, but I like my reference image sharp. And what the Soulsburn script does is that it creates a layer, which it puts the reference image in, and then it freezes them, and uh, also activates uh, show frozen gray, as I showed before. Uh, but again, what I don't like about this is that if you press F3 and go into wireframe mode, you lose sight of your reference image. And I, I find that a hassle. That's why I like to work with yeah, views, viewport background image, config viewport background image, use file. But I definitely recommend using some of the scripts I uh, showed for setting up reference Im image. It speeds up the workflow a lot, and it works pretty good. Um, yeah, I will do a knife tutorial, which you can follow, and I will do the same thing I've done this time. And uh, have a happy life, have a happy day. See you later.